Hello there. Hello. Hello there. Uh, Gerald, is it? That's me. How are you doing? Uh, Terry Lawton is my name. I'm calling you here from Wexford, Gerald. Yeah. Uh, I'm just wondering, I have an inquiry. Um, I'm wondering, do you know, are Met Air and, uh, planning anyway soon on uh, talking about the uh, ongoing weather, for, weather modification programs going on in Ireland? None that you know about. Okay. Um, well, I, I'm just I'm I'm looking at just re recent some recent statements from um, the World M M Meteorological Organization, and well, back in 2007, um, they uh, they stated that in recent years there has been a decline in the support for weather modification research and a tendency to move directly into into operational projects. Um, they said that now back in 2007, and only late last year they they stated it as well at the United Nations uh, General Assembly that um, that if weather modification programs globally were to cease, that the the weather um, ramifications could be catastrophic. So they said that, but there are weather modification programs undertaken in some countries. Yeah, uh, mainly Eastern Europe uh, and kind of beyond. Um, but they're not undertaken by and large in Western European countries that I know of. Okay. Do, do you know about? Uh, are you are you talking about like just regional programs then? The, uh, weather modification is very much a local and regional activity. Yeah. Uh, do, do you know, Jerry, about any any of the ones going on um, around Europe? Would you know anything more about them or whereabouts they're going on? In the Balkans and uh, some of those countries, but they're very local. You know, they're about stopping hail falling on. On, or trying to at least uh, on, on vineyards and things like that. They're very, very local. Yes, yes. Perfect. Um, and so, you see, I, I'm, I, I've, I've known about weather modification for, for a few years now, and it's, I, I, um, I, I never heard about it before. Then I'm only starting to come into contact with the last few years into contact with this information. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm reading like. Lengthy white papers and uh, written out by the U.S. military going back to the 1920s, talking about how they how they seek to uh, control the weather, um, to to predict it, to control it, and eventually to predict it and eventually control it. Um, John F. Kennedy talked about that at the United Nations convention in in September 25th, 1962. It's 1961. He said that they, that they they seek to control the weather and uh, predict the weather and eventually control it. And I'm just looking at, you know, U.S. military documents like Aurora Flight Sciences and all. I mean, the, in, in that document, they go into great detail about the cost-benefit analysis on uh, fitting out, retrofitting out uh, military and cargo uh, planes with, with spray equipment to spray the atmosphere with, uh, with sulfates to facilitate these programs. So, I mean, there's just mountains and mountains and mountains of all this documentation I'm reading and I, I'm I'm hearing the World Meteorological Organization talking about just the things that I was uh, I, I mentioned there and and also UNESCO have recently um, come out and made a statement about a public statement about geoengineering as well and um, and weather modification programs and um, you know and I'm just looking at all this weather now you know and it's it just it seems just so out of sorts. The whole thing has just gone completely no, the, haywire. The, the scale is completely different. Weather modification happens only on a local scale. Yeah. Modifying the sort of weather that we get is, is virtually impossible. Right. Because, because the scale of what's happened, the scale of the weather systems that we get, the big Atlantic depressions and so on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not susceptible to modification. Yeah. But as, as a meteorologist, Ger, would you... Like, would you think that you know local, local, regional um, programs? W would you think that? Would you not think that they would have a, some kind of a knock-on effect uh, globally? That, that is a good point, and that remains. To, that nobody really knows the answer to that question. I think it's fair to say. Yeah. Nobody really knows the answer to that question. Yeah. It's not something that you can easily test. Yeah, and because you know, like I remember. God, you know, I'm 39 years of age, and when I was growing up, I mean, the summers used to be just summers, and the winters used to be winters, and so on and so forth. Oh, that's memory. If you look back at the record, it wasn't like that. Well, well, when, well, but from when you grew up was a short period. When I grew up, you know, what we remember is our childhood was, was a decade. Yeah. 
know, that's a short period. Yeah, in but basically what I'm saying is, anyhow, from my, in my earlier life, you know, for the first 20 years of my life, seasons were seasons, but it's four seasons in one day now. And, so I'm telling and you that, it, that if you look at the climatological record, that does not support that. Yeah. You look at the numbers. Yeah, yeah. Seasons haven't, haven't changed in that yeah. context. Um. See, I, I'm I'm looking every day, and I'm seeing the skies and what's going on in the skies of Ireland every day. Like in in Wexford, you know, you're you're from Wexford yourself, and you 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 would know that we're under a busy airline here now. And I'm I'm filming planes flying over every day, and I'm seeing I'm seeing unusual um I'm seeing unusual activities going on up there. Let's say. Uh, um, I see the activity. There's nothing unusual about it. Sorry? I see the activity and I don't see anything unusual about it. Yeah, well, uh, what I'm seeing, I'm filming them now pretty much well. I can't, we don't really see the sun anymore because, you know, the, the, because of the, the, the shroud of blanket that's around the planet now with these programs going on, but, I mean... Sorry, I think you think there's some program going on that's not happening in this country. Right. Well, I, 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 I want verification of this, you know, because... Sorry, right. you want verification of what now? See, I, 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 I've basically, our... our would Met Air and have would they be willing to make a public statement or a statement to even myself about this that they aren't going on? I mean, I'm I'm onto you here now, and do you know it's not going on. Yeah, no, I know that. I'd, I'm telling you anything I see in this guy is perfectly explainable. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, I'm I'm not I'm not doubting your your your, yeah. your knowledge at all, Jerry. I'm I'm just um. Well, I, I, I I'm I'm wondering well, like would would Met Air and uh, uh, sorry? There's people scaremongering about a lot of this kind of thing, and I'm telling you everything I see in this guy. Yeah. Is completely. Explainable, right? By meteorology. Um, and okay, well, <laughs> I mean, the, these trails that, that basically that are being laid in the sky now, whatever you want to call yeah, them, vapor trail, v- vapor. You say they are water vapor from aircraft. Well, basically, they didn't they they didn't expand out and they didn't persist in the, in in the past. Now, I, I I have photographs. They did. I, ca- I I've looked at old photographs and I can't see any any trails. In in any photographs, there's far more aircraft now than there were then. That's uh, oh, I know, I know. I but mean, that's just the increase in aircraft. But air still, air. some days, like most days, the same amount of air traffic is going over, and some days there would be there would but be. That, that's complete nonsense. They're, oh no, I see they, it every day. They, they expand at certain atmospheric conditions. Yeah. The state of the atmosphere when the aircraft is is traveling through. I understand that. That determines whether the contrail, as it is condensation trail, yeah. whether it disappears. Yeah, yeah. Whether it persists. Or whether it spreads. I mean, when it spreads, it's effectively seeding a cloud. Yeah. Um, but it, it's normal aircraft emissions, if you like. There's nothing unusual coming out of the aircraft. Um, of any civil aircraft. Well, you see, I, I have actually filmed. Um, I've seen planes in, in in within two or three miles of each other. I mean, on the same altitude. So you uh, can't tell the altitude from ground level. Oh no, I can't. It's totally different, and it no, from flight radar twenty floor for the the flight radar tracking system. Well, I'm that close if they were at the same altitude because there'd be a. There'd be well, 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 I've got photo- I've I've got photographic evidence of this, but basically, uh, planes in or two planes in or around thirty three thousand feet, and one would be spraying a big, lengthy, persistent trail that expands out into a cloud bank, and the other would be leaving nothing behind. Right, you seem to say spraying there as if that was it's, it's aircraft emissions, it's normal aircraft emissions. Yeah. Which is seeding a cloud. Or it, whatever it is, anyhow. Um, I mean, it's leaving something behind. Whatever the terminology you use, like to use, awesome. I don't know. But it's leaving something behind in its wake. Now, I don't know what they are. I'm only speculating, and I just what I, you see is water. It's water. It's cloud. But what, cloud droplets. Um, I mean, all it is is like vapor hitting the, into freezing cold, um, hot vapor hitting the freezing cold uh, temperatures, and it forms ice crystals. But I mean, these return back to ambient temperature a couple of seconds later, and that's how a contrail has always dissipated in the past. But what I'm seeing now, they, they, is, they've always behaved as they behave now. Obviously, jet engines have changed. Well, I have no photographs. I can't see any photographs. Do you have any photographs, basically, going back before 1995? by and large, or when we do for cloud purposes, but uh, the fact that you don't have photographs doesn't mean things didn't happen. Yeah, so, I mean, I think, well, myself, uh, it flies in the face of physics to me to, 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 um, to imagine that, that vapor can expand out to hundreds of times its mass. I mean, that's, that's a physical impossibility as far as I'm concerned, because... You, under, you misunderstand the process. No, but basically, uh, it's... it's misunderstanding the process. Okay, could you explain exactly then? Cause that's what's happening with the cloud, the, 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 uh, the output from the um, aircraft. First of all, there's moisture at that level anyway. Yeah. The moisture is, is vapor. Yeah. It's in the vapor form. Mm-hmm. So when the when the aircraft leaves, it's it's uh, emissions from the aircraft engine. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I'm aware of that. Yeah, they form little 
centers for the cloud for the for the cloud to start to develop. Yeah. But once the cloud starts to develop, it can grow or it can shrink. That that's determined by the physics of what's happening up there. Yeah. At that altitude but, with the particular moisture level and the particular temperature. But to, to, that to changes all the time. Yeah, but to, to widen out like I've seen I've seen just one trail completely block out the sun for a couple of hours. Yeah, yeah, because it basically grows a cloud. Yeah. Yeah, but that, I mean, certainly if there were no aircraft flying, there'd yeah. be fewer clouds. Yeah. And that's not well known. I mean, contrails do lead to cloud formation. Yeah. Um, but that's certainly true. Yeah, well, I... No, there's no argument about that. Well, I, um, I, I've i never, ever seen it in the past. It's funny, isn't it? And now I'm seeing it every day. And I see NASA now have come out and they've, they've declassified that the Earth has darkened by 20% since these... Well, since global programs, let's say, uh, regional programs or uh, whatever, have started. Well, under, under very busy uh, routes, there's certainly an increase in cloud under a very busy area. Definitely, you know, because... Because of the effect of aircraft. I mean, the sunny southeast we were known as down here, now it's just it's not that anymore. It's, the to it's anything but, you know. Still the sunniest part of Ireland. Wow. I don't know when the... La yeah. <laughs> yeah, wow. Well... Is is that a fact? Because I don't even know that anymore. Because I'm seeing I'm seeing a lot of uploads going up onto the internet every day of other sky watchers and like I from looked at the Mid Ireland website to see the climate. Yeah, the from like in Longford and Dublin, a lot of days now I'd see loads of sunshine and we'd be blanketed out here. And from what I see, that it's yeah, yeah. It's, it's interesting. Now, do you have those statistics on your website there, Jerry? Yeah, of course we do. The sunshine figures are there. Yeah. Yeah. You can look them up anytime. Yeah. Um, right. Now, just there was one day that Evelyn Cusack was on, um, on the, doing the weather, and she actually pointed out these vapor trails in, in one of the uh, forecasts, and contrails and jet engines. And, you know, that's, that's up on YouTube. Now, I, I never remember in the past um, a, a, a report like that, you know, and a weather report, uh, a forecast mentioning, a weather forecaster mentioning contrails. Did, did did you ever mention them in the past? You know, because I can't find it. Did you do you ever remember mentioning it in in the? Like, in why the, is that important? She decided to talk about them that day. We all right. About them every day. Yeah, yeah. No, I just I'm just posing the question. That's all. We just wanted to explain that these are contrails. Yeah. Okay. Right. And, and, and quite normal. D yeah, and it's just it's it's it's. It's just perplexing, you know, to think, you no, know... It's not perplexing. We're trying to tell people that these are normal things because there's a lot of people out there scaremongering oh, yeah. that they're abnormal. No, yeah, no, I was we, going to... We have a scientific duty yeah. to, to uh, stop people being afraid oh, and yeah, yeah. scared by things. No, I, I wasn't saying that... I wasn't going to go on to say that was perplexing. What I was, what I was going to say is what is perplexing is that I'm looking at... There's like NBC in America, CBS, uh, Fox Weather Channel, uh, no, Fox Weather. They, they, they've all talked about uh, spraying chaff, um, military operations going on over America. They, they've all talked about it in the last couple of years and even in, on Italian television, Australian television, German television, they're, they're all talking about this. Yeah, um, I, I haven't heard RTE talking about it at all. The nearest thing to... If, if you're interested in the science, I suggest you read the scientific literature. You don't have, try and take science from the media because... Yeah, well, I, yeah. I definitely would never do that anyhow. Yeah, yeah, I would always think for myself and, and, and use basic science, you know. That's usually better, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, okay, sure, look at... Um, <sighs> Yeah, so it, there's there's no there's no public statement going to be made about it. I'm wondering if if I if I was to get a statement off Met Aaron, is there any chance of getting anything at all in writing just to say that these are just vapor trails? Um, I mean, we've no reason to put that out. But if you want to write, oh, in no. and ask, um, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll put something in writing. Yeah, no, I'd I'd like to I'd like to um, request something like that. So, do you have a an email address on your website? Yeah, it is a contact form on our website. Yeah, can come in there. Okay, sure, I'll do that then, Jerry. Yeah, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll certainly make it clear what our you know, understanding of things is. Okay. All right. Lovely. Thank you very much, Jerry. Thanks, Dad. Bye-bye now. Take care. Bye-bye.